All right, gang, welcome to another edition. Today we're gonna to talk about what happens when you finally do hook that giant bluefin on the yummy flyer. How do we battle it, Dave? What happens at the end? What are we supposed to do? Okay, here's what I do. Once we get a bite, and I hear all the commotion down in the cockpit, I simply keep the boat driving at eight knots, and I ask, are we bit? Is it on there? And I look at the reel, and when it starts taking line out the other way, I take it out of gear. Then I watch. As soon as the line stops going out, I put it in gear again. I constantly want to be pulling that fish towards the boat because we don't take the rod out of the rod holder. So that's why I'm going to keep the boat in gear. And you guys shouldn't either because you're going to be using at least 130, 130 pound spectra or braided line, if you will. You guys are going to be using at least that much because there's no reason to fish them any less. Then, if you decide that you need to hold the pole because it's going to make you a better person, good luck with that. I hope everything works out fine because you're going to be using 30 to 40 pounds of drag and you're going to be holding the pole. Use your boat. It's way easier. It's all about holding the fish up by the tail. It's not about the battle. Nobody cares that it took you three hours. But if you're a he-man and you need to... Get in there and battle with the fish so you're sore for the rest of the week. Go right ahead and put a harness on and fight that sucker. But the way we do it, we keep the rod in the gunnel. We keep the boat going down swell, in and out of gear, just tapping it in and out of gear. That keeps the head of the fish pointed towards the surface. He's always going up. We never let him get his nose down. We never let him get into the death circle. The average fish we catch on here takes about 15 minutes. 25 minutes is probably the longest we battle a fish. The big fish we caught the other day, two days ago, was 218 pounds. It took us 17 minutes. Because we're constantly walking the boat down swell. When we gaff that fish, the boat's moving. The boat is moving down. It's moving down swell. Why down swell? Because it's way easier to handle everything when you're not laying in the trough, rocking and rolling. And if you don't allow the fish to get into the death circle, it's gonna put less stress on that knot. On where you, so they're not gonna have a tendency to break them off. You're not gonna have a tendency for them to bite through because you're not constantly back and forth across his teeth as he's in that death circle. It's like this, the head's coming straight up to you the whole time. There's none of this going on. At the very end of the battle, the fish is going to shake his head. They always do. We've seen it a million times. They shake their head violently right before they die because they're trying to get that yummy out of their mouth one last time. When you see it start to shake his head, put the boat in gear and get goose it a little bit. Keep that tension on. Don't let him shake his head. Your angler is going to freeze when they shake their head. Every single person does. I don't care how long they've been fishing. When he shakes his head, they panic, it scares them, and they stop winding. That's why you have to wind with the boat. You have to kick the boat ahead. Keep that head shake to a bare minimum. Do not allow him to throw that yummy out. Because your yummy's weighted. It's got the weight on it. That weight, plus him shaking his head, is going to allow that hook to dislodge from his mouth. Constantly walk the boat down swell, keeping total tension on it till you gaff it. It'll come right to the corner that way, and you won't have this constant head shake, and you won't have it throwing your yummy right at the end. All the fish that we've lost in the last three years have been Captain Air, totally Captain Air, because when the fish would shake his head, I would freeze for a second, thinking all heck was going to break loose, and then he would throw the hook. I've learned that if I keep it in gear, when he starts to shake his head, he can't get that hook out of his mouth. I just think, try to think like a fish. He's shaking his head violently, and we stop winding. We allow a tiny bit of slack. That yummy flyer is going to fall right out of his mouth. Don't let it fall out. Keep the boat in gear. When you go to gaff him, keep walking it in gear. Down swell. Bring him up right alongside of the boat. When you gaff the bluefin, gaff him dead right here in the peck. If you can gaff him in the peck fins, like you'll see the video that we're posting on our website, you'll see the gaff shot. I gaff the fish. I drive the boat, run down the ladder, gaff him in the peck. It turns the fish upside down. The moment you turn him upside down, he stops moving because he's never been upside down in his whole life. Get him. Okay. Freeze pull. Freeze pull. Freeze pull. Freeze pull. Freeze pull. 
It's the first time ever in his life he's been upside down. He stops. It puts him into shock. And then you watch as we drag him on the boat. The moment he gets on the deck and that gaff comes out of his pecs, he lights up like a Christmas tree and he could have still swam for another hour. You'll see he swims probably two miles laying on the deck. He swims two miles going 100 miles an hour. That tail's going up and down. But he didn't move when I gaffed him. He didn't move an inch. He didn't move. He didn't shake. But if you gaff him in the back or in the side, you best better be ready to hang on, baby, because that thing's going to rip that gaff right out of your hand. Gaff him dead right in the pecs. There's two fins coming right out of his pec. Gaff him right there, side to side. Flip him upside down. He stops dead in his tracks. Good luck out there, guys. Go get some.